Okay, so I think it's time for another Revelocity devlog. Last time I was at 69 commits to the source control, this time I'm at 95. So what's changed? A large chunk of my time right after the last devlog was spent ironing out the last few issues with the ability system. There was a few bugs where abilities wouldn't reset and cool down properly, especially when the player had died and then gone back to the main menu. It ended up doing some weird funky stuff. Once these issues were dealt with, I added in some new abilities to test that everything was working as intended. I actually discovered some interesting use cases that I hadn't thought about when making the system. For example, take this Pulse Wave ability. It was originally designed as a one and done sort of ability. You activate it, it creates a shockwave that pushes enemies away, and then that's it, it cools down. This was done by using a short duration and a large knockback force. But if I make the effect last longer and then dial back the knockdown force, it creates a sort of repulsion field which gently moves enemies out of the way. And if I put a negative value in the knockback force, then it actually draws enemies in like a gravity well. So with just this one scriptable object, I've now got three new abilities that do different things. Going forward, as I design more ability logic, I want to keep this multiple purpose design front and center, just so I can get more mileage out of the system. I also mentioned in the last video that I implemented the Odin Inspector asset, and that I'd been mainly using it for some simple buttons. But I've gone a little further with this, and now I've added a custom window with some logic to help automate some annoying tasks that I find myself needing to keep doing. So now I can select and toggle the enemy spawner from this one window. I can find and select the player, and I can heal them or harm them, which helps massively in testing. I can also load the main gameplay scene if I need to close it for any reason. And finally, I can interact with the UI in different ways. So I can toggle various menus on and off, and I can swap between the game UI and the menu UI, etc. So the next thing I got sidetracked with was the Unity Spline package. So the whole point of the game, obviously, is to get your speed and momentum up. And I want things in the environment that like aid that, that help you get some speed and sometimes hinder you as well. With that in mind, I've created a prefab which I can drag into the scene and draw out a path. And then in game, this becomes an interstellar highway which drags the player and also enemies along the path. It wasn't without its flaws. For example, there was a weird bug which meant a player could get stuck in it and just sit there at terminal velocity and just mow anything down that came into contact with them. Now, it looks cool, but this is very much an exploit and it just make the game way too easy. So yeah, I had to remove that, unfortunately. But with the oddities ironed out, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out and I think it's a really fun addition to the game. I also started to try to redesign some of the other environment stuff. I only spent a spare couple of hours doing this and it's massively unfinished, as you can see, there's no like artwork necessarily in place. But I designed this spin object, which increases the player's spin momentum and these cannons which launch the players and enemies out of them. And I also try to do like an art design thing with the bounce pads. I've, again, this is all gonna get reworked. I just wanted to play with around with some stuff with a few spare hours that I had. The next edition was something that I'm not fully sure I like or if it's even that useful, but I implemented a little minimap system which shows you a simple zoomed out view of what's going on around the player but I don't really find myself looking at it because the action in the center of the screen is so hectic. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is it worth keeping? I don't think it is, but you know, some people might like it. Oh, by the way, if you like what you're seeing so far, please could you wishlist the game on Steam? It really helps out a ton. Uh, the link is in the description below. The last big thing I've just finished up is a slight refactor of the ability manager, which has allowed me to give enemies access to the exact same abilities as the player. And this has really helped change the feel of the game with the addition of two other test enemies. Previously, the enemies would just chase the player and try to hit them. But now, for example, we've got an enemy that gets close to the player and then uses the dash ability to try and impact the player. I also added in a new enemy, which has the repulsion ability, which we saw earlier, which pushes the player and other enemies away from them. And a third, which has the gravity well ability, which draws the player and other enemies in. These aren't final designs by any means, they're placeholders to make sure the enemy ability system was working, which I'm pleased to say it is. And then one of the very last things I did was to rip out all of the old sound effects which I've deleted from the project to allow myself a fresh start to re-implement them. 
which will be the focus of the next devlog and my next kind of month or so of development time. If you want to play this current build that I'm showing now of Revelocity, you can do so on Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Dan Potts. If you support at the appropriate tier, you get access to this and future builds of the game, and you will get a Steam key uh, on launch, and you don't need to be an active subscriber at that point. You just need to have supported on that tier or at any point, and then I can go back through and you will get a key for the game. And that's it for this devlog. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.